Asian countries in 2021, India saw the highest medical inflation of 14%, followed by China at 12%, says a recent report by Motula Loswal Financial Services. In fact, one look at hospitalization bills and you know that healthcare costs are indeed skyrocketing. Life is unpredictable and a double-digit medical inflation could burn a hole in your pocket should you get diagnosed with a condition that requires long hospital stays. This is precisely why having adequate health insurance is important, especially in today's day and age. But just like ordering food online, when it comes to buying health insurance, you are spoiled for choice. Well, buying the right product is not impossible, but it may get difficult given the number of options. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Insuring India, a podcast by Digit Insurance. I'm Disha Sangvi and on this episode, we'll discuss everything you must know before zeroing down on the right health insurance policy. Before we move forward, I would suggest you keep a pen and paper handy because our guest today is someone who knows health insurance backwards and forwards. On this episode, we have with us Mr. Mahavir Chopra, founder of Beshak, a community-led insurtech platform. A chartered accountant by qualification, he's been in the insurtech space for over 17 years. In fact, he was here even before the term insurtech was coined. In 2006, Mahavir co-founded one of the first insurtech platforms in India, and in his last stint, he was the chief business officer at Coverfox. In addition to building Beshak, which offers expert insurance advice from professionals, Mahavir actively writes for publications such as The Economic Times, Mint and Money Control. And on a personal level, I've known him since my journalism days, where I would bug him every other day to understand the nuances of insurance. Hi, Mahavir. Welcome to Insuring India. I'm thrilled to have you here. Hi, Risha. Uh, Happy to be here. Thank you so much. For starters, Mahavir, it would be interesting if you could tell us how health insurance has evolved over the last few years and where do you see it going in the coming years? So I think uh, if I look back, let's say, when I started my journey in the insurance space, uh, health insurance was not a, such a great product. It was not even a focus for most of the insurance companies. Uh, in fact, it could be a surprise to a lot of people out here who are listening to this uh, podcast is that health insurance was categorized as a miscellaneous product. So right. it was considered to be a product which is part of, let's say, a lot many other small products like home insurance and those kind of products. So it was a very, very small uh, uh, business at one point in time. Given uh, the awareness and given the uh, the advent of private sector insurers and bringing awareness about uh, health insurance and healthcare and all that, I think uh, products saw great evolution uh, since the last 17 years. Right. I think a lot of customer centric uh, features were brought in. Uh, people would be surprised to know that health insurance was not a lifetime product, let's say 12 years ago or 10 years ago. It was a product which ended at a specific age. So there were insurers which ended the product at 70, some ended at 75, uh, some ended at 80. And uh, but none of the products were lifetime. So products have become lifetime. Uh, a lot of uh, initiatives by IDA has made health insurance. I think the most of the work that IDA has done so far, uh, one of the products that it has put the largest focus on has been health insurance. I think purely because uh, the number of grievances and the number of issues that it faced also were the highest. Uh, given that, I think a lot of simplification, standardization has come into picture. That's the one part of the whole thing. From a market perspective, I think health insurance has seen great evolution from being a product that covered only hospitalization to taking steps to cover OPD and to then also cover wellness. Uh, like most of the health insurance products now give a free medical checkup, right? All these features are great additions uh, to to the product and to customer value proposition that I think was required. So uh, it has been a very exciting time. I think in the future, what's going to happen is that given that uh, more data is now available and uh, will be available because of the uh, a lot of initiatives that the government also is taking from the perspective of having a national health authority and an ID along with that. I think products will evolve further, right? We'll see more integrated products, which not only cover you for hospitalization, but also from right from primary care to, you know, taking care of uh, large complicated uh, hospitalizations. So I think uh, we are at a very, very good, exciting time in the health insurance space. Absolutely. I think uh, that lends a good sense of understanding to our listeners, you know, who may be fairly new to uh, health insurance. Um, So tell us, Mahavir, what makes for the perfect health insurance product? Is there a quick cheat sheet that you could help us with? 
right so uh, the answer is actually yes and no both uh, a cheat sheet uh, you know is something that can be used for a much more simpler product in the market uh, health insurance unfortunately uh, is a product which is quite complicated and also the offerings and what could be available for a specific individual would depend upon the person's profile the location uh, you know his health history his medical history and a lot of other things that come into play uh, so from that perspective uh, honestly uh, this is a question that i get a lot on social media that tell us which is the best health insurance uh, and my answer has always been that you know there is a proper need analysis that is important and based on that there would be a certain number of products that you would be eligible from and from where you'll need to actually go ahead and do some shortlisting the basic things that you should look for uh, when you're looking for a health insurance are two things and these are two things which i would it, i'm oversimplifying it, it but it's important for users or people who are listening to this to understand one is that the product if you are at a stage or you are you are young like typically let's say if you are in an age where you don't have any disease and you are let's say 30 year old or let's say in that age group what you should do is that you should focus on two areas one area would be that products which have the least amount of out of pocket expenses meaning the products which are giving you the most comprehensive cover for the core uh, deliverables right that a health insurance product has to give what are the core deliverables in a health insurance product that if there is a hospitalization all the expenses related to the hospitalization get paid right. and there are minimum amount of deductions that happen how will you basically solve for this by looking for limits right so there are largely three four large limits that you should be very careful about when you are buying a policy a uh, couple of them we will discuss uh, in detail while the yeah. call is on but uh, a couple of them is what i will right now share uh, one would be obviously room rent limit and this is typically something that people are not aware of till they have a claim and the people who depend on only having corporate health insurance policies or employer health insurance policies which have maximum uh, chances of there being a room rent limit uh, what a room rent limit does is that basically it will be it reduce your chances of being able to claim the entire bill because let's say if you go for a larger room than the room that you are eligible for as per the policy conditions there will be a very large deduction not only with, to the extent of the amount of money that you uh, uh, claimed beyond your limits but there is also a proportionate uh, deduction that happens mm-hmm. and let's say if there is a room rent limit of 4000 and taken a room of 8000 you could have almost a 50% deduction in your overall uh, health uh, health care bill right the hospital bill so that's one apart from that there are other uh, important uh, financial limits that you should be aware of like a copay or a, a more importantly a surgery limit like a lot of policies have limits to specific surgeries like there could be a limit for cataract there could be a limit for let's like, say hip surgery or a bone yes. surgery and that you know uh, although you have such a large cover uh, you would basically be stuck uh, with a policy which may have a large cover but may not pay for uh, the amount of hospital bill because there are some other restrictions in the policy right? right most important feature in a health insurance that you should not forget apart from whatever i have just mentioned is the sum insured so i've been talking about this a lot on social media uh, is that sum insured is the only feature that any insurer can never withdraw right all the other features i can basically uh, create a new product withdraw uh, the existing products and withdraw all the features right but sum insured is something that is the core deliverable of a product and hence you should be very careful how you choose a sum insured and for what age you are choosing a sum insured largely you should choose a sum insured not for your current age but for your old age because upgrades are becoming more and more difficult as we are growing older and because all of us unfortunately because of our lifestyle and all the habits that we have are basically in a scenario where we will have some disease or the other god forbid we don't because of which there will be issues in terms of you being able to upgrade your sum insured so sum insured is another feature last thing uh, which is the cheat sheet which so i said the answer is yes or no in my view the cheat sheet is basically finding a good professional advisor uh, okay. if you are able to find a good advisor who is focused on claim service a lot of your problems get solved because that person is then going to be oriented to give you a product that helps you at the time of claims right so it's a very very good hack if you are able to find a very very good advisor and then basically someone who has and what is the definition of a good advisor a good advisor is someone who has good experience in helping customers with claims person is taking ownership of claims he or she will ensure that you buy the right product with the right declarations and go with the right process so that when that person is owning up claim they, that person itself will take care of the experience 
right hmm. so I, my view is one way is that do your research find your product by your own there is more than enough content available online to be able to do your own research there is a lot of work that has happened the other way which is the hack would be to find a really really good powerful financial advisor who knows his business right so i think uh, mahavir you've shared some very uh, helpful tips but you also said that it is something that requires a lot of research uh, right. because we may want to agree or not but buying the right health insurance policy is an uphill task uh, right. you know which is one of the biggest reasons why people actually procrastinate or you know completely ignore buying health insurance um so mahavir for someone who is new to it what's the best way to go about finding a product that suits them well because see there are aggregators then like you said there are professional advisors there are financial planners but again for me i'm com- if, if i'm completely new to health insurance what should be the one thing i do first yeah so i think first most importantly uh, uh, it's always good to be aware of the product so you should read up a lot about the basics of the product and find credible people to read up from because unfortunately right now because internet is an open space that you could find everyone and anyone talking about health insurance so finding right credible people to follow and uh, people who know their stuff who have experience or who have uh, credibility right Uh, you should follow such people and try to learn from them read up uh, on credible websites which basically you can trust uh, and learn, learn basic stuff about insurance what you should basically learn about insurance is largely how it gets paid what are the things that won't get paid what are the terms and conditions that you should be aware of what are the exclusions in the policy so you should do your basic homework yeah the second thing in my view and this is something that uh, is a is a view uh, that i have evolved out of my 17 years of experience is that the best person if you are able to find to buy a policy is going to be a local financial advisor who is reputed who has a reputation of managing claims that's the best person to buy a policy from if you are able to look for such a person and buy a policy from that person who has a track record and you are basically know people who have actually experienced good claims from this person who has actually done all the running around there is a good chance that you will be at a safe space because that person is like i already said and i don't want to like stretch this point further that that person then owns up the experience so i think to go about this entire thing one is to educate yourself that does not mean just by taking an advisor's opinion you should not basically like shy away from understanding the product you should definitely understand the product and its basic nitty gritties and yeah. then also at the same time spend enough and equal time to find a good advisor right and i think i couldn't agree more basic homework should be done you know even even before you could reach out to the advisor or the insurer the insurance company but this brings me to my next uh, question mahavi you know insurance is often looked at as a sunken cost because of the yeah. overconfidence that you know i will never fall sick or i'm perfectly mm-hmm. fit i'm perfectly healthy i think as human beings we avoid thinking about the future or what could actually go wrong when we age so given this bias the big question that arises is what should one pick between features and premium basically in a features versus premium battle what should one pick yeah so uh, it's very clear for products like health insurance that you should not look at premium at all you should first look at your needs match up that with uh, with with the products that are available and then basically buy from one of them right in a scenario where premium is a constraint like someone has a budget constraint in those kind of scenarios what you should do is basically first find a good product with good features probably buy a smaller sum insured and create a road map in the long run that okay in the next 3 years 5 years i will read this sum insured and i'll buy this specific product but features uh, is what you should follow because finally you want to ensure that your claims get paid uh and they get paid to the the highest amount and you have least amount of out of pocket expenses right and you don't want to be getting a root shock uh that okay you cut corners at the time of buying the policy but at the time of claim then the insurer is also cutting corners because which was a part of the uh, terms and conditions of the policy there are sweet spots uh meaning uh, where you could basically uh you know look at premiums which are not very expensive but plans which are there and solve for the major core features that you are looking for and uh, so so from that perspective it is a balance but at the same time the weight that you will give to features will have to always be higher so that you have right. least amount of issues and least amount of deductions at the time of claims and then look at premium in case you have constraints go for a road map and let's say look for 5 years 
का रोड मैप टू बेसिकली रीच दैट प्रोडक्ट and then you could perhaps always increase your cover right yes. once you yes. once you pass those 3 or 5 years and perhaps yes. your income is up more importantly to understand for people who are less than let's say 25 26 and looking for health insurance a lot of the the recommendations that go around is that you should buy let's say 15 lakhs 20 lakhs and that could probably be very expensive for so people who are very very young uh, let's say in their early 20s probably they can also look at a road map so people a with uh, budget constraints and we with who are younger and today probably cannot shell out that kind of money for both these people there could be a road map strategy for the remaining i think the ideal strategy will remain that you buy the best sum sum insured and the most optimal sum insured at the beginning when you are looking for a health insurance so that you don't have to worry about it for your remaining part of your life absolutely that that makes a lot of sense i do understand and i think most people do understand that the one factor that needs to be considered while buying health insurance is the increasing health or you know healthcare inflation so right. but there is so much talk about going for a sum insured of 1 crore with you know some insurers mm-hmm. actively advising customers to buy policies with a high sum insured um do you see merit in this i mean is there really a need for such a high sum insured again in this the question the answer is Uh, a, a bit of both yes and no i'll tell you first uh, more most importantly why 1 crore makes a lot of sense uh, because of majorly two reasons one is that we started the entire this this video with you saying that you know we have very very high uh, healthcare inflation right uh, even if there are two members in a family if you do a basic math at even 6% inflation and let's say the person is let's say 30 year old that person will need close to around 20 lakhs of sum insured by the time he hits retirement right right so anyways uh, from a two individual perspective taking a floater i think a 40 lakhs sum insured is anyways something that anyone should recommend today or buy right should you buy 1 crore uh, today 1 crore premiums are coming 1 crore health insurance premiums are very very attractive there are sometimes in fact i had written a tweet on this that they are more that sometimes cheaper than even buying a 25 lakh cover there are multiple reasons for that obviously we are not going into that but the largest reason is that right now insurers are optimizing for utilization you are not right. going to be able to claim for 1 crore so typically insurers would look at this from a point of view of that how much are you finally going to be able to utilize today so basis that uh, they are actually charging you premium so a uh, premium for 10 lakhs let's say if it is 20000 premium for 20 lakhs is not going to be 40000 because there is a way less a probability for you to claim be able to claim above that amount so premium for let's say if uh, is 20000 the remaining 10 lakhs would be probably only 2000 because the probability goes down right so 1 crore sum insured products in my view are like an open and shut kind of a product where you then have to once you buy a 1 crore product you do not have to mull over your sum insured and worry about healthcare inflation and what is going to happen and what is going to change ever in your life so it does make sense right uh, during the pandemic we saw people getting 25 lakh 30 lakh bills because they were in hospital for 50 days 60 days because of uh, being in icu right and icu is extremely expensive so we really don't know what is going to happen in the future and whether god forbid there is another pandemic god forbid there is some other disease that comes in because there is a lack of visibility about what is the kind of expense or inflation we are going to see it makes sense to buy the highest cover you can afford honestly okay uh, because mm-hmm. and specifically because right now people can afford it uh, the strategy that i usually uh, suggest people is that buy the 1 crore plan with a clear understanding that probably in the long run this may not be as affordable as it is today because health and care inflation hospitalization costs all will catch up be okay with being required to downgrade your cover from 1 crore to 50 lakhs when the sum in, when the premium increases like the premium to sum insured ratio when it increases and you think that it's now becoming unaffordable probably let's say 10 years or 20 years from now be absolutely prepared that okay fine i will downgrade my cover from 1 crore to 50 lakhs you're still at home right you still have enough mm. food mm. so that's the usual strategy it's basically trying to leverage what is available today and also plan for the future both together but you know the other thing is uh, when it comes to financial planning experts suggest reviewing the plan every few years to ensure it aligns with the changing life stages now we all know that health insurance is an important element of financial planning so how should one's insurance requirements evolve with um, changing life stages this is a very good question and i think uh, a lot of people would know, want to know the answer to this typically uh, 
the answer that i usually give for this is that a you should always be covered with health insurance like from the time you're born to the time uh, obviously you die there should be health insurance that should be available to you for a certain period of time this health insurance probably could have been bought for some by someone else like to start with your parents would have bought health insurance for you then maybe once you start your career your company would have bought health insurance for you right and at a specific juncture where you think that okay now you uh, you've reached a certain stage in your life which could probably be at between 25 and 30 you could start investing in your own health insurance product right with the knowledge that if you skip your job or you basically take a break or you start up on your own or you become a freelancer or whatever reason you have your own cover with you right employer covers also are controlled by the employer so the, the cover can change uh, the limitations can change uh, because if the premiums are shooting like for example if right now also you see health insurance premiums are hardening in india and specifically for corporates and basis that either the features will get curtailed or your uh, your premiums will go up and probably employees will have to share take a share of the overall premium usually because in employers don't want to make the employee pay they will curtail the benefits right and right. like i'm talking about one of the largest e-commerce companies in india has a copay in their policy right today which did, did not have 2 3 years ago so uh, which is very surprising uh, when you see that you know they are giving the best of the benefits but in health insurance because the premiums are going up they have now started copay. introducing a copay right having a, your own health insurance is a milestone so you should look for in your entire financial planning so between 25 and 30 you should buy a health insurance of your own and like i said earlier there should be a road map that you should create that during specific life events you will review this cover and go to the cover that you need at the time of retirement hmm. with a clear understanding in mind that not for always will there be an upgrade available for a health insurance and right. not for always will you have the best policy available in the market uh, being available to you basically so all the good products available in the market are also products that are have very very strict eligibility guidelines they may mm. not be available for everybody so having this having having looking at this that okay i need to pre book a health insurance at an early age between 25 and 30 with a road map mm. that by let's say 34 35 i go to the optimal cover that i need by the time i am going to retire so typically in numbers if i have to give a example is we recommend that you start off with a 5 lakh cover by the time you hit 25 26 and by the time of you reaching around 30 let's say look at a 10 lakh cover and if you are married then start basically or you start having probably you become a parent then you look at uh, going up to the cover that you will need at the time of retirement so by the time of 34 35 you should ensure that uh, you hit a cover of uh, at least 15 lakhs per adult member in your family you'll be very surprised to know and this is because we know this because we have a very active forum on our website Yeah. Uh, that a lot of people today who are in the age group of 30 to 35 are struggling to get a good health insurance because they're getting declined by insurers largely because of being overweight obese uh, having diabetes or any major lifestyle condition the time is very short for you to finally upgrade your cover to what you need while by the time you retire so ensure that as soon as you are able to afford it uh, you quickly buy that cover apart from this uh, i think by the time of 35 uh, uh, because you would have enough liabilities say or you would have enough responsibilities you should also look for a critical illness cover for yourself yes, uh, a yes. fixed benefit cover which takes care of loss of income in case let's say something happens and you have to curtail your uh, income because you have to curtail your job right meaning if you are probably someone is working for a very high pressure job let's say and he has to uh, basically step out of that job because of a certain disease uh, and this happens a lot uh, you just need to go to uh, uh, meaning go to an impact guru kind of a website and you know early age uh, critical illnesses are very common now uh, you may have to step out of a very high paying job and take a lesser paying job and because of which you may have a loss of income so it's very important and for this generation it is extremely extremely important to also buy a critical illness cover Uh, which gives you a lump sum amount whenever there is a critical illness that has got diagnosed uh, if you look at statistics uh, it's becoming more and more evident that 
it's very unfortunate what i'm going to say but it's more than more evident that a large population of young folks will unless meaning unfortunately end up with a critical illness by the time they hit 50 you just have to look up on the internet and you will read more about it so it's about lifestyle it is about hab- it is about habits it's about food it is about uh, the po- pollution that we are uh, basically facing every day right all this put together it it's basically uh, also one more factor is that we are going to live longer right because medical yes. science will ensure that you may not live uh, like uh, typically the the age the uh, uh, is increasing the life expectancy in expectancy. india is increasing close to 15 years in the next 20 years right so you, people will live longer when but you will live longer with a disease right there's a very high chance so to manage that disease it's very important that you also look at critical illness by the time you get 35 right. so that's where i would yeah by 35 you should have planned for all kind of eventualities in, with respect to healthcare risks right I think Mahavir, you've given us a very, very solid roadmap here. And I think uh, for me, the biggest takeaway is to ensure that, you know, get that health insurance policy before you succumb to an illness. Uh, I'll just digress a little bit here, uh, Mahavir. So, you know, Beshak recently collaborated with Mint for the Mint Beshak uh, insurance ratings. And I must say, uh, as an organization, we've really gone through those ratings and tried to understand the, the, you know, the logic behind uh, what went into those ratings. So right. there are about 30 insurers, you know, and all of them have multiple health insurance products on offer. How did you go about rating these products? I ask this because there are products that are comprehensive but come at a higher premium, whereas yes. others may not have all the features and could come at relatively lower premium. So right. uh, what were the deciding factors? Sure. So uh, the very, very macro level deciding factors were two. Uh, one was how which are the insurers which would basically or which are the insurance plans which will have the lowest out of pocket expenses right? right when we started with this call we talked about two parameters that a customer should look at one parameter is that look for plans which uh, have the lowest deductions or financial limits for the core benefits that it offers right that is the f- f- most important thing according to us and products which have that will obviously give a good experience to customers at a time of claims yes. the second which is equally important is that insurers which have the best and most hassle free experience at the time of claims right so these are the two macro factors that we have looked at uh, product and uh, claims right whatever right. information was available uh, uh, on uh, on the iid website and also what is available on the insurer's website is what we have basically picked to create these ratings very interestingly uh, we have not included premium as a part of the rating the product is rated purely on product and claims and then we have shown a separate line uh, which shows you the uh, the price meter, right? The price meter tells you that, okay, this product is 4.5 and is available at 3 out of 5, which is basically, it's cheaper than 60% of the products, 40% products available in the market, right? We've left the price versus feature uh, decision with the customer because it okay. is very, very personal, right? Someone who may earn 50 lakhs may have... Uh, may may have a value of 5000 which could be very different than someone who is earning let's say 5 lakhs right? right probably the person who earns 5 lakhs has lesser value for 5000 rupees meaning i am not saying the other way around also it could be it could be depending on disposable income it could be dependent on lifestyle it could be dependent on backgrounds and everything so we've not tried to shove in a premium as a part of the rating at all right mm-hmm. why and why, why a certain number of insurers our plans have come in and not come in it has been basically basis two things right uh, we've rated plans on core benefits that they offer and how it impacts claims so our complete focus has always been with beshak as an organization also has been claims so how does the features actually impact the final claim that the person is going to pay and the core expenditures that happen at that time and then we have rated based on that and claims experience again we have rated on what is the best amount of hassle free experience that insurers are giving right uh, both both put together is how the product gets calculated now a insurer could have three products right like you rightly said we basically rated all products in the market that are available today online sure. and then we have basically uh, uh, ranked the first 15 and shown them so you would when you go through the ratings you'll see the same insurer also having two products ranked mm. in the top 15 right so basically they managed to have two products which came in the top 15 
compared to let's say some insurers which may not have been able to feature because probably the number 16 17 18 that way so uh, the most interesting part about us doing ratings is that we have no conflict of interest with any insurer with any other player right we don't advertise with insurers we don't have any kind of relationships with insurers in terms of leads or basically any kind of marketing partnerships core value that we are bringing on table with beshak is being conflict free and independent so the rating that we have developed is completely conflict free and has no commercial angle in terms of let's say favoring one insurer to the other insurer probably whenever we update it if there is a another product that comes up it will automatically come up there is no intervention that happens beyond the data that we are analyzing sure sure i think that, that that's fair enough Bahavi, before I let you go, a couple more questions. So, if you, for our listeners, perhaps who are new to health insurance or who are just, you know, sort of deciding which product to buy, uh, could you quickly tell us what are the red flags in a health insurance product that people should be wary of? So, um, unfortunately, it will. It, it's not something that I could probably. It would take one more hour session for me to talk about all the red flags that exist. But the larger red flags is something that I already uh, mentioned in the beginning. But I'll just quickly summarize. the biggest red flag is going to be financial limits so look scan the policy document for financial limits always right uh, do that very well because uh, it's very important uh, to understand that where is your money going to get deducted at the time of buying the policy some insured is just one parameter apart from that there could be other things which could be red flags in the policy apart from financial limits i think uh, the other parts are very very small nuances but a lot of products have finer print which probably not many people are able to let's say go through or understand like for example there could be products uh, which could uh, pro- be in the, on the face of it provide you a maternity cover and a infertility cover and a baby cover and all that but the limit for that cover could be 50k for all the three expenses right, right. put together so don't just go by the top of the brochure and read more detailed and go more in depth to understand you know if this all these features are available is this good to to good to be true and how do we go in depth to understand uh, what are the finer prints in the policy right uh, so there are unfortunately a lot of red flags in a lot of policies that exist today when we created the ratings we went to policy wording level comparison so we have not done brochure level comparison and just looked at a table and done comparison we actually tabulated policy wordings of all policies that exist in the country and then word by word we have compared policies and there are uh, unfortunately red flags which you will have to be aware of uh, one hack that i mentioned and i will mention it even at the sake of repetition is find a good advisor uh, because all nuances and the products are getting more and more dynamic now with a new idea regulation insurers will be able to update products on the fly uh, so it's going to become more and more difficult for you to be able to keep a tab on what is changing what is different from what you saw maybe 6 months ago it's important hence to talk to a good advisor and buy from someone who's credible and someone who's professional and who will take care of you at the time of claims right i think you rightly said i think the proof of the pudding is in the fine print if i could put it that way right yeah. mavi you know as a company we've been obsessed with simplifying insurance but it is something that can't be achieved overnight but you hold a larger view of the industry so tell us what more can the industry do to cut the crap out of insurance yeah so uh, i think the most important thing uh, that all the entire industry right now unfortunately is missing is customer experience and measuring customer experience in a objective way which can be compared up across insurers right uh, because we are not able to do that well uh, is the reason why every insurer is fighting the battle to create new features for the customer probably that they don't need also why this is happening is because there is not enough talking point around experience and claims right sure. i think as an industry the most important thing that if all of us can get together would be to solve for uh, getting a more better objective comparison of experiences amongst insurance companies like there could be an insurance company which could give you a plan the best of the plans in the market and give you at the fastest speed but then at the time of claims it could be terrible 
right? right right now there is no objective very very objective why we have tried to do our best with the ratings there is no real objective way to understand how insurers are faring at the time of giving experience to customers at the time of claims for example there are so many insurers i cannot obviously name any of them who do underwriting at the time of claims they start looking at investigating everything that was declared at that time and then investigating cases which is a very very the most the biggest root shock that a customer can get can be that things are getting investigated from let's say 15 years ago or 10 years ago so from that perspective uh, this part is not getting captured i think long in the long run because every insurer will catch up on features and catch up on uh, product uh, benefits the only way insurers in the long run will be able to uh, compete with each other is going to be experience and hence the need for experience uh, becoming the differentiator is something that uh, hangs on the wall very quickly we need to build that and i think that is what when you talk to customers they also clearly are in the need of that they want to not know ki kitne uh, beautiful features are there in the product they want to know whether the insurer will pick up the phone whether the insurer will pay the claim and whether the insurer will not make a mess out of the claim right that is that is what the customer wants to know more than they want to know all the fancy features and that's something that in the industry still lacks in terms of measurability right <clears throat> claims are the moment of truth right so if, right. if that if that's when you can come to the customer's rescue i think that's above the features or the product or beautiful brochures or whatever that you design exactly Thank you so much Mavi for taking out time and doing this with us today. This has indeed been one of the best, you know, one of the most insightful discussions we've had on insuring India. I'm sure our listeners have a lot to take away too, but if there's one thing that I can add to this is that don't wait before you buy that health insurance policy. Healthcare costs are going up. Now is the time. You are in your early 20s, late 20s, early 30s. Take the plunge and buy that health insurance policy. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in. We'll be back soon with yet another episode of Insuring India. Until then, take care and stay safe.